This poem takes us back to the days when modest young maidens used a bathing van in order to enjoy the delights of the ocean. Bathing by Benjamin Briley The sea hove gently, frilled with tiny waves that shimmered on the beach or crept in caves as if with infant breezes raised to show how liquid smiles o'er ocean's face may flow and their soft kisses fell on tide-borne limbs, fair as the ocean ides of old, and favoured wavelets wantoned with the threads of unbound tresses, revelled webs of gold. When Damon, idly strolling on the shore, his hands within his pockets turning o'er, their friendly coins hears Musidora's voice, He, Mary, do come in, it is so nice. The youth turns round, beholds the straggling vans, dipping their thirsty axles in the wave, and by a green one numbered twenty-three, a timid nymph her shivering form doth lave. It is his Musidora he had missed, her from the pier an hour ago, but wist, not that she laid aside her prudish ways, in azure sack to court the vulgar gaze. Her hair about her shoulders floated free, the bunch that held her hat sublimely poised, Upon her burdened head, in van he stored. T'was bought in Manchester, and is highly prized. And now she's gone, the waves meet where she stood. Who oh, the tie with the sea, or some such flood? The youth exclaims, again he hears the voice. E Mary, do come in, it is so nice. The two had come from Oldham via trips, By speculative gentlemen got up, to gather shells, ride donks, and see the ships, then home return on prawns and shrimps to sup, and there were other nymphs within the van, Yellet Mary, Sally, and Selina Anne. The three were getting ready for a dash into the briny billow, there to splash. Anon a timid foot steps down the stair, tis Mary's, shrinking from a wave whose lip hath kissed her ankle, she in fear exclaims, E bet I wish I were back again with trip. But Sal, less timid, ventures down behind, And with a push more vigorous than kind, Poor Mary sends a drift, Then plunging in herself a war of splashing, Doth begin, Whilst Musidora, vulgarly called Bet, In a swimming attitude, cleaves wave, yon wave, Tracing a line of foam as with one foot, The other hopping, she the tide doth brave. The battle rages near, Selena Anne has scarcely left the threshold of the van, ere she is ducked and held a moment down, while Sally's head is yet dry at the crown. Then booms a thundering shout along the shore, Duck the big and lasses, meaning Sal the bold, and Sally sees the maid to kiss the sand, and promise quarter ere they lose their hold. Now I'll go down, the bubbling waves close o'er, then comes a whistle from the far-off shore. The train is starting. Damon frantic tries to stop it. Vain attempt, yet on he flies. The others scream and toss their arms on high. Their sack-encumbered limbs divide the spray. Then to the privacy of twenty-three, the dripping mermaids mount the laddered way. The train is gone, and with it Damon too. And why to Musidora so untrue? And why leave Mary and Selina on? with Sal to quarrel in that cursed van. When rose the moon upon the tranquil beach, the sun had got his nightcap on and lay, as if in cradle slumber. From a bank four weeping fair ones watched the closing day. The night set in, the midnight watch came and went, the god of morn his golden iris bent, o'er eastern wave, yet these four maidens slept upon the bank where they had watched and wept. And now the tale is told in Oldham town, how Musidora, Damon's letters tore, and by next trip to pool or port went down, and strewed the fragments on the avenging shore. Johnny and Peggy by Benjamin Briley It's two score year and ten hour lass, sin fust I courted thee. You live that time at Kitty Green, at top of Bowman's Lake. I'd seen thee trip through copy wood, I'd met thee at the steel, but when I tried to spake to thee, 
how queer my art did fail. A printed bedgown then thou wore, a hailstorm pattern called, with linsey skirt and apron white, and bonnet deep and broad. I used to think thy e'en were like two diamonds in a well, to get at which and share their leap, I'd tumble in me cell. For weeks and months I hung about, and through your window peeped, and sight and longed and fretted sore, but word I never cheaped. To once when primed with fettled ale, I'd had it thou blue boar, I must have plucked for to knock at door, and shout thy name and all. My heart did pant, my yours stood up, and ne'er a foot I heard, till window wriggled up a bone, and chamber curtain stirred. Then summer come, pish on my yed, it was a neat at washing day, and I found I were covered o'er with suds, as white as blossom spray. We plucked quite cold, I crept towards warm, but vowed within me cell, if e'er I get a chance to do it, I'd pick the int up well. My mother sauced me, well who might, and said the deals in men, I served they further were than that, but still he come again. Instead of carrying on that way, and snurching till thou a blint, Go thee once more, and punch at door, and whistle, while thou's wint. And if it doesna come for that, there's lots on bowman's lee, as farently and good as who, that would be proud of thee. I mustered up me pluck once more, this time bout fettled ale, and swung me clogs to catty green, and jump your garden rail. Crash into a fabry tree I leap, a under window grew, and noise it made thy shuttle stopped, and out thy candle blew. Then somebody come to thee, our lass, I knew by shining strip, a lead that shot down garden fout, and my heart were at my lip. I turt, thou hast, I am, I said, but the pain I have's inside. No fabry tree nor garden rail had caused it if they'd tried. It's thy two een, and shot me through, where bullets made a flame, and if I dee, they and say about there's no but thee to blame. I shouldn't have liked to be hung, thou said, and raise me to my feet, so if a word'll cure thy pain, I'll give it thee to neat. Thou said that word, Twere one as sweet as ever music trilled, To hear it half as sweet again, I'd ten times all be killed. We made it up that neat our lass, And pledged our love in porch, And when that tree bore fruit again, We'd said, I will, at church. Twas on their fiftieth wedding day, That thus old Johnny spoke, Nor e'er a pair on Bowman's Lee, had born so light a yoke. Their children four had wed away, And left the couple lone, Save with the dear companionship Of memories sweetly known. That day came round again as twelve, When time flies quickly o'er, And found old Johnny and his wife Discursing as before. By the mon, said he, and up he sprung, I feel as young as then, Let's fancy we we'll and never live this time, and call it o'er again. I'll go outside and knock at door, and whistle, tis na late, and stead of breaking fabry trees, I'll rick up garden gate. Then thou mon come and say to me that word thou said before, and seal our loving porch as then. Without he smacks a score. Well, well, said Peggy, Go thee out and play thy part as come, And I'll play mine, As if I'd ne'er yet spoken to a mum. Agreed they each their several parts Proceeded to fulfil, The old man shoot the garden gate, And whistle loud and shrill. 
Up went the window overhead, the curtains fluttered white. Then down on Johnny's atlas pate, a shower bath did alight. Thou'd sink thee, Peg, the old man cried. I bargain no one for that. Thou's waked me through and did to know. I'm here without my hat. Thou's played thy part and I've played mine, said Peggy from her room. I've no but served thee the same to night as I did the first night thou come. A Cotty Her Own by Benjamin Briley Come, lads, lend your ears, and I'll sing you a song that is not all battle and strife, but peace and goodwill between mon and his kind, a bond between husband and wife. It's be your own master and landlord beside, fight shy of bum bailiff and dun. Plant your vine and your fig tree afore it's too late, and live in a cot of your own. Then live for to morn, lads, and dinner be foos, but work and lay by while you con, while you lie some and limber, pile up bricks and timber, and live in a cot of your own. A man that's a shop boot will never get on, if his credit he pays for it, that's sure. Let him pay ready brass, spend no more than he gets, and he'll never be hampered nor poor. A rent day's a care day as oft as it comes, when our landlord's as hard as a stone. But this weekly vexation ne'er troubles the heart of a mon that's a cot of his own. Then live for to morn, lads, and dinner be foos, but work and lay by while you con, while you lie some and limber, pile up bricks and timber, and live in a cot of your own. There's one of me neighbours, how wealthy he's grown, with lending and screwing and jobs. But if nobody had borrowed and paid double back, how much better for other folks' fobs? What you're paying through your nose in both shop scores and rent, and interest to pop, shop and loan, will soon like foundations of prosperous days, and build you a cot of your own. Then live for to morn, lads, and dinner be foos, but work and lay by while you con, while you lie some and limber, pile up bricks and timber, and live in a cot of your own. You gonna raise hay if you sow now but wind, loud talking or gathering a corn, but delve plow an arrow and scatter good seed, and you and fill both your meal poke and churn. Then here's to a mon that'll strive for the best, and lay out for our age while he come, and it ne'er shuts his door on a shelterless friend while he lives in a cot of his own. Then live for to morn, lads, and dinner be foos, but work and lay by while you con, while you lie some and limber, pile up bricks and timber, and live in a cot of your own. Go tap the ragged childer and flit, by Benjamin Briley. The reverse side of the picture to come home to the children and me. As our Jemmy been here to night, oh thou art there, thou great drunken slutch. It's strange if I'm now else to do, but are thee every bedtime to fotch. Come home, or I'll go and go to bed, and leave thee to sleep where thou art, for thou art here every need to thy life, as soon as thou gets thus out at cart. What is there for supper? There's now. About thy tats and red errands for souls. How can I think I can get thy out good when thou leaves me now but the bare walls? If thou give me thy wage as thou out, I could do somewhat farrantly then, but I get in a thought in me yet, we mun ne'er and knout greatly again. Have I brought thy top coat, go thy luke? Had I brought thee the street jacket as soon, then else have had to put it up spout. For money to pay for thy shoon. There's rent chaps just been, and he swears he can never catch nobody a home. He's been four or five times today, but I were out and I couldn't away up home. No, I hadn't been drinking myself. I've never tasted tiger today, but I've been over to plat into your nans, and he would map me to stop to me tail. If we hadn't had a two full of rum, who pay for it, and that's now to thee. If it's done me some good, thee ne'er fret, but thou never thinks now about me. 
What's made thee bring Jolie on toys? Thou art like a to have brought thy brass womb, for Sal has pooed the yed off her doll, and Dick sent his clog through his drum, and there's young folder did diddle dull cap, stick it full of pink ribbons, thou's brout. If thou brought me two black uns instead, thou'd have done summat like as thou art. Will to come home, then tarry where tart, for I'm gust if I ask thee again. Hey, this world would soon be at an end if women were out like you men. No, I'll see thee be far, for I'll sup. I'd rather throw pot at thy head, and have twenty good minds for to do it, if it's no but for what thou's just said. Well, tip me, I do if thou dare, and I'll just have thee walk it out door. Thou thinks cause thou plague it to the wife, thou'll have me at same rate as thou do. But I'll show thee a spirit, me lad, I'll no attack a blow for a bus, and if to tries this out capers with me, as bad as thou does, I'll do wuss. So wind up thy lip and chew that, and tarry on knee if thou will, if they had taken thee, and keep thee, it's reap, for I'm blessed if I've not had me fill. If thou art tired of living with me, go tack thy ragged childer and flip, for if to beats me, Succeed to myself, thou'll never map me to grottle a bit. Bill Babby's Frolic A Failsworth Story of Peter Lou by Benjamin Briley Bill Babby went to Peter Lou by patriotism or fancy led, but what's more likely a love of fun or aught that tumbled into his yed? He'd seen that morn a mugger stew. Just flaking o'er with fat in the oven, with margarine and other yabs to make it sweet, ra work for spoon. There were else some slip throat, lung in rags, and sweet oat cakes just nicely browned. In front of fire made clogs feel leet, they bounce like gawks when touching ground. Bill Geet a carter's dose of this, and off he went to Peterloo. He'd fox the door from out his den, went back with some three pints of stew. So grand a day he had not seen, some money lasses donned him white, with banners waving, what a seat, to make his heart jump with delight. But the fun were o'er ere it began, Bill knew by sound there's summat wrong, but what he were he could not tell, that moved and swelled that mighty throng. He thought, to a time to be leaving row to those that like to fight it out but when he tried to stir by mass he found no road to get about at last he spied a narrow gate that led to streets unknown before and feeling safe from cutthroat arm he whistled sang and sometimes swore when he heard the sound of strife come nearer he backed into his hole where he stood peeping like a rat, but venture out, not for his soul. There come a windfall, straight from clouds, a new French horn, a glittering brass, lay like a tempting bit of goud, or on his smile from winsome lass. Bill blew a blast on that there horn, that sounded like the crack of doom, or jackass with its tail teed down, or waver grunting at his loom. Just then a true horseman rode, reeked past where Bill had pitched his tent, or rather where he'd crumbed his rags, then the second blast, the welkin rent. The horseman reeled, the horses who struck fire as back the heroes rode, Bill blew and blew, took troopers swore, then no far off the duels abode. Soon the street were cleared, then out Bill crept, and funded Newton Lane to sell, and when he seated the pow, he said, "'Twere the first time ere he'd been in hell. Moral, whenever you're on a frolic bent, don't go to sings like Peter Lou, nor blow a horn in the devil's band, unless your pokes well lined with stew. The Gardener and His Flowers by Benjamin Briley Why do I dwell alone, you ask, with ne'er a soul my lot to share? These children have such claims on me, that I have little love to spare. 
My children, yes, I mean my flowers. They prattle to me just like bairns. They speak a language of their own, which only a loving parent learns. They're at their morning prayers now. You'll see them fold their tiny hands to lisp their horizons like babes, obedient to God's commands. You'll see them look at me and smile, as tis their wont when prayers are said. They're not like children of the poor, who have to earn their daily bread. They toil not, neither do they spin, when on the mount our Saviour said, Yet Solomon with all his pride was not like one of these arrayed. They give me no anxieties about their hats and shoes and socks, nor aught they wear. They're quite content to clothe their limbs with robes or frocks. From these the meek-eyed monitors our maidens might a lesson take. They show no airs, but on no side, as if God's work they would unmake. They're quite contented with their lot, nor care if riches came in showers. If they bedeck the path of queens, they won't forget they're only flowers. It grieves me when they're short of rain, with not a drop to wet their lips. But oh, how thankful each one seems, when dew like liquid gems it sips. I'm fretful only when one dies, to see it droop its tiny head, and smile a farewell to the sun, and then I know the flower is dead. Thou art lonely, my Jamie, by Benjamin Briley. Thou art lonely, my Jamie, our tale or in love, thou goes mopesing and sighing about, and thy clothes don't fit thee as well as they did, thou art like a poor leek going out. And they vex thee, O oh, what must thy lip hang so low, or hast lost all thy marbles again? But they sighed, no one on marbles, nor fret when they are lost. Thou art in love, that to me is quite plain. Thou art quick going out, but thou art slow moving in, and thy clogs seem too big for thy feet. They're too heavy to trail when thou art going to thy work, but leaks them and limber at neat. And thy nose always points toward old Johnny Brooks' farm, as if pigeons were flying up roof. But I think Johnny's lass has more likings to thee at neat when he was tripping down clove. Thou art known like thy feather, when he come to me, he didn't a storm staring at now. He'd a stood at house end, and a whistled and sung, till thy grandfather a bounced him down fout. Then I shown up the neat after as brazen as brass, and into our house chucked his hat. Now Jamie, if wants to get far to thou lass, show some pluck, and who like thee for that? Now go thy ways off, lad, and come no one again, till we jelly, thou's made it all right. I know it, the lass likes thee, but gone up for shame, to ask thee to walk out of a neat. How Johnny'll no like it when he gets to know, he thinks daisies and mayflowers are Jane. He'll grumble and swear, but he'll hardly say no, when he comes to his senses again. Jamie's off like a greyhound that's just seen a hare, and what time he'll come back nobody knows. If he's gone in good yearnest, I don't have much care, lest out Johnny and he comes to blows. He this courting's rough work, but I'd rather twas so, than this mackin thou's nice for him to come. There's honest a sweetheart stand whistling at door, than a welcome as if they were in a womb. It's right, there's our Jamie I know by his foot, catch a mother not knowing by its sound, and he's managed his job, so but told me he'd do it, and we're glancing and happy all round. Come, Jamie, and bust thy old mother in nook, there's nought like a good on his face. I knew if thou gan the lass a fair love in look, in her heart, lad, who'd find thee a place. Little Annie's Birds, A Lesson of Kindness, by Benjamin Briley The snow lay on the ground, and made a druid of each oak, 
When Annie stepped from the kitchen door To feed her feathered folk, They flew in circlets round And perched in chattering groups about. Some found the snow from clothesline stumps And others shared a spout. Then down they came in quick descent Soon as the crumbs were spread, And Annie's glee shone out in smiles At each waggling tail and head. She knows which are the baby birds, They are so wild at first and shy, But as they grow they get more bold, And push their elders by. Tis naughty of them, she admits, And selfish too, she says, But who can blame them for it, When so human are their ways? She loved to see upon the snow The prints of tiny feet, Like patterns traced on summer dews, where fairies nightly meet. You won't come when the snow is gone, And summer brings you food, To pick the seeds and flowers and fruit, To feed your little brood. Thus Annie spoke, and round there went, A twittering that said no, And Annie gave her word that she, Would feed them during snow. The pledge was kept each summer time, When gardens suffered most, Of Annie's little crop of peas, not one was to her lost. The birds would come and sing for her, Or chatter from each tree, But ne'er descend to garden bed, Or with the fruit make free. Thus kindness and immunity From pilfering God secured, And neighbours wondered at the cause, Whilst they such thefts endured. Ah me, my friends, When you are bent on strife begetting words, Take counsel and a lesson learn From Annie and her birds. The Cambrians welcomed to the Queen On Her Majesty's visit to North Wales, August 1889. Hail, Chief of England's royal race, The sons of Cambria welcome thee, But not with conquered spirit bowed, Nor arts bereft of chivalry. The hands that once in mailed might The foeman seized with deadly grasp And wielded battle-axe and sword Now folded are in friendly clasp. Dead are the feuds of bygone years And buried neath them battled towers And where the blood of kings have flowed Is now bedewed with peace's flowers. Thou art welcome to this glorious land Where, for their homes, the Cymru fought and love of freedom nerve the arm, Their terse great deeds of valour wrought, Who would not fight for land so fair, Each mountain, stream, and forest green, Where nature in her grandeur sits, A crownless, not a throneless queen. Each mountain is a regal throne, Each stream a harp whose echoes raise, The tones that thrill the Cambrian's breast, with memories of warlike days. But rings not now the clarion's note, That summoned to the field of strife, When Celt and Saxon met in fray, And gave to slaughter life for life. Thou hearst the roll of other sounds, The hymn of praise bestowed on thee, By children of thine ancient foes, And tuned to bardic minstrelsy. The strange weird music of the past, that fills us with religious awe, And bends the knee to worship forms, Whereon is writ creation's law. We pray thee not forget this day, When owned within thy Saxon hall, But think what love thy presence wakes, When patriotism and duty call. Visiting at Llangollen, August 26th, 1889 To Henry Irving, Esquire, President of the Arts Club, Manchester, by Benjamin Briley. Friend Irving, let me shape thy knave, If but in spirit I would weave A song to thee, but that I'll leave To abler pens, but not more honest, I believe, Than poor old Ben's. Thou hast essayed the highest rung Of fame's steep ladder, pen and tongue, Of each thy well-earned praise sung, in tuneful strain, And e'en thy paeans have been rung Across the main. Thou know me, the old Titan Club, With name Shakespearean did me dub, It was not Hamlet, 
there's the rub, but now I've got em. May every thespian set his tub on its own bottom. I trust that on life's busy stage I played a part from youth to age, nor shrunk from aught that did engage my humble wits, but hide with fear the critic's page and where he sits. I played at times in many parts, but never dealt in broken hearts, nor meddled much with Cupid's darts. I've shot a true one, when from his line a fool departs, he's something to ruin. I've done my shout among the rabble, and easy lengths have dared to babble. I played a king, but failed grab all his royal treasure. In poetry I've dared to dabble, just for my pleasure. How many messages I've borne to dukes and lords and brave their scorn, which messages were often torn or trod to dust, because the vintner said he'd sworn no further trust. As sea coal I got taunts and blows, because the pimple on my nose, quite big enough for bud of rose, had made me squint. George Sheffield put on all the glows of Bardolph's tint. Melpamine, the peevish slut, persuaded me I need but struck, and shout the time will come to put cash in my purse, but found by practising I got from bad to worse. Now I'm a long way past my noon, and in the slippered pantaloon, the last age I shall be in soon, whatever twill bring. Song's eyes, song's teeth, fed with a spoon, song's everything. The Fair Drummer Boy by Benjamin Briley I'm off to the wars, love, to fight for old England. Oh, weep not, dear Mary, that now we must part. Though torn from thy presence to cross the wide billow, thine image shall leave not this fond, loving heart. Thus spoke a brave guardsman, his foot on the gangway, the sails of the transport unfilled to the wind. It was not faint heart wrung the sigh from his bosom, but leaving his Albion and Mary behind. Up went the anchor, away sped each vessel, that bore a brave army to Spain's rocky coast, and soon in the smoke and the tumult of battle the image of love to our hero was lost. One night as he lay by the campfire reposing, a sweet gentle voice whispered thus in his ear, O oh, let not the sigh break thy wounds soothing slumber, But rest, dearest rest, for thy Mary is near. He starts, hark, the trumpet to battle is calling, The drum rolls its thunder, the sword flashes bare, Up, up, ye brave guardsmen, the eagle is screeching, And flapping its wings in the dull morning air. The sun gazed once more on that field red with carnage, the dead and the dying lay thick on the ground, when a drummer boy knelt by a wounded young guardsman, and whispered of love while he bound up the wound. Who art thou, my youngster, that comes with such tidings, to cheer me in sorrow, the soldier, he cried. But the boy answered not, for a stray shot came flying, and Mary fell dead by her true lover's side. Wom Brood by Benjamin Briley There's nought in this world like my own chimney corner When me chair up to fire I've pooed When the wife has just rocked the little babby to sleep And fotched me a mug o' warm brood Who smiles dost thou deign as if no but just wed When her caps and her napkins who's blued Then warms up her face with a blink of thou leap that shines in a mug o' warm brood. It's as breet as a glen to I may time my life, or as having old pleasures renewed, is the sun neat that falls round me our stone at night, when seen through a shower o' warm brood. My house is my castle, has often been sung, where no king, duke, or lord dare intrude, but it needs no hard feet in to keep out a foe, when I truce where a mug a warm brood. Care once to my neighbouring, and pottered at door, and his nose into keel he screwed, but he soon scampered back 
to his feather the dirl, When he smelt had a mug a warm brood. When I'm thinking what toiling and frabbing there needs Through this world to get decently pooed, It melts into pastime, does the hardest to work, When it's helped with a mug a warm brood. It'll help us to fettle both nation and laws, And to soldier up many a feud, and if the world has gone wrong, we can reach it again, By the power of a mug, a warm brood. Then come to my elbow, thou primest of drinks, With sweetest of pleasures endued, The jolliest neighbour to jog with through life, Is a full pouching mug, a warm brood. Thou Tin Kettle by Benjamin Briley I'm a merry little kettle, For I sing when I'm in fettle, Besides that, I can tell a good tale. I spit and I sputter like a toad in a gutter When they fill my old belly with brown ale. I'd rather it were waiter for a drop of the crater Or an old-fashioned bag in tea and rum. Then the steam from me spout makes the children give a shout And they mack in kitchen table and turk drum. They wanted me for tea, whether icin or boe, There's nother on em good until they brood. And I'd give the old mon a wink when he's sitting down to drink tea that's fit for now, but the pigs because it's stewed. But merrily I sing when a beauty, there's a ring round the table and the toast is smoking up. Then loud is the chatter as the cups and saucers clatter, and Thambrosia goes plopping out to pop. To the music of the mill grinding coffee I am still, I like to hear the sound when it's in tune. Then throw me from the pot when me water's boiling up. It's like turning frosty Casmus into June. Who wouldn't a be a cattle if they made it sort of metal? It'll polish like a shilling when it's new. When thou stones warm and breet, and young folks sit round at neat. Who oh, have merrier little cattles? There are few. Abba the Yates welcome to Prince Albert Victor. On his visit to Manchester, October the 27th, 1888, with an apology to Edwin Wall, by Benjamin Briley. Come, Sarah, get thy bonnet on, and gang along with me, and we can go down to Manchester, this royal lad to see. They say his face is like his mum's, his e'en are like his dad's, but in other things, if truth were known, He's much like other lads. His pasture's been too rich for him. He seldom porridge takes, And nobody'll e'er be played with fat That feeds on eccles cakes. If he'll come down to Daisy Newt With Charlie Frank and me, We can show him how to ratch his rags Where cheese and bacon spree. We can teach him how to swing his clogs And how to use his spoon, And how to whet an appetite By peeping into thumb and seeing there a bubbling tin, just like a little say, And I'll be sworn when he goes warm, he'll want no more tay. We impile some flesh on his bare bones, a grinning through his skin, And mack him he'll no know his cell, before a week he's been. And when with thank oats fun and song, he's heard the rafters ring, He'll say, sup up lads, out stand next, I'm every inch a king. We are on our journey on, by Benjamin Briley. The church bells rang with a cheerful chime, And the sun was sinking low, As tired with play the children tramped, With weary steps and slow. They were overcome by their holiday jaunts, And no father cared to roam, But they sang as with a joyful heart, We are on our journey home. The children cheered as the milk pails clung, their thirsty gathering gailed, And buns were flying like balls at play, And the baskets never failed. The birds were watching the children feed, Expecting that their turn would come. Then the children sang as a parting song, We are on our journey home. An old man bent neath a load of years, His partner by his side, Was gazing upward with vision dim, At a sign on a post then sighed. We're on the right road, love, the old man said, When he'd read this wooden tome. 
This wait, said a workhouse, Come, darling, bear up, We're on our journey home. Nay, turn not to loot, the old man said, It is not the church on the hill, Where our dear one lies, We could look on her grave, When we lived in the cot by the mill. They are not the old bells we have list to so oft, In the grey of the evening's gloom, That seem to say with a mournful voice, You are on your journey home. Ah, never more shall we hear those bells, Nor look on the dear one's bed, Nor trim the flowers that grow at their feet, And garland her flaxen head. I care not how short this journey will be, Nor how soon the time may come, when the kindly earth will be soft to our feet, And we've ended our journey home. Then towards the workhouse they wandered on, But gave a farewell sigh, When they'd looked their last on the cot they'd left, And the graves where their kindred lie. They are resting now from their earthly task, No more from their dwelling they'll roam, In heaven they've found eternal repose, They have finished their journey home. Hard Times by Benjamin Briley You may talk o hard times, said old Abraham Adams, but you ain't no but touch the fringe on em yet. They are now to em bacon with scissors were cut, and porridge no weaver could get. When the wind would blow through you, as if you're in a sieve, and whistle the keener it froze. When we'd nothing to fence our cold bodies gain the cowed, but creep us, and now tell be thee woes. Then hard times when a crust of brown George were too hard for rattans to drag in their holes, when children were more scientific than rats, and bored for it like boring for coals. They made a big hole in timber's hot shelf, how they had done it, way, nobody knows. But the crust of brown jaws disappear like a ghost, then to a creep oars, and now teth be thee woes. It were dangerous to turn out with your owl on you, Grace, for you're unsure to be tackled by dogs. If they'd smelt mutton fat, they'd a second lane, and at em both tops of your clogs. If a begging day happen, though seldom one come, me father had get ready for blows. It had guarded the oven door like sentry and wars, more creep us, and how to be thee wells. No pawnbroker strove out to custom me get, because folk had nothing to pop. They'd taken their rags till they'd none they could spare, unless they'd a stripped em in shop. Little help could be squeezed out at rich in those days, neither in meat, fire, nor thank you, sir, clothes. They're well round their houses and shut up their hearts when we'd creep us and how to be thee woes. I've worn out me owler in looking for work, but I've worked there were none to be had. When the mice emigrated and deed upon road, and with the rattans why things were as bad. When the brids come in flocks to a cottager's door, and showed him their frostbitten toes, and how slackly their feathers hung on to their backs, they could na eat out to be they woes. I think it quite time these our limbs were at rest, or on the long journey towards Wome, where there's no frost or snow, and no yammering hearts, nor half-naked bodies can come. I heard a voice saying, Ye sufferers on earth, come hither and try your new clothes. For the poor shall be rich, and the rich all alike, No more creepers are out to be the woes. Creepers is referring to creepover styles, How to be the woes, how they by the walls, A kind of gruel sweetened with treacle. The Beautiful Snow, a parody by Benjamin Briley Oh, the beautiful snow, the beautiful snow, How gentle it falls on the earth below, Like fleece newly blown from Ganymede's crest, And floating away to some airy nest. Says Johnny Inthnoot, come out and slur, 
then falls on his back at his grandfather's door. Oh, that were a bang, he shouted, oh, ho, the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful snow. Oh, the beautiful snow, the beautiful snow. See it whirl through the air as the rude wind blows, now weaves it a web of its gossamer flakes, as along the valley its course it takes. Says Betty at Robins, e, what a nice slide, as bright as a cattle I'll just have a ride. Come stick to my aunt, why did to let go? The beautiful, beautiful, beautiful snow. Oh, the beautiful snow, the beautiful snow, now sweeps o'er the moor like a merciless foe, and creeps under doors like a cowardly elf, afraid of the storm it created itself. How Matthew Besoms has gone out at Thouse, and made toward a slide as quiet as a mouse, I'll give it yon madam, but strikes not a blow. Who's measured her length on the beautiful snow? Sam Bamford's Grave A Christmas Idyll by Benjamin Briley I stood beside Sam Bamford's grave at Luke's or Middle Town, and thou lad woke within his earth, and said, Where art a bound? I'm going down to Shuttleworth's, at sign at thou bores ye head, to meet a rake a friend or two, and have a jill, I said. Way hey, way hey, what's up like? Is it weights, or is it show? said Sam. I fain would like to go with thee, lad. It's dryish where I am. Is Ned with thee, or Paige, or Jim? Is Joe or Charlie there? Lige's gone warm, I know poor lad, he little to stop for here. Come tell me all, and more beside, I'm much in fain to hear it. There's nobody calls to tell me out, no but now and then a spirit. It's been a mackin' furniture, to caper on some floor. And poets begun a banking yet, a publishers come poor. And Frenchman tain't to sour kraut, is Livingston come home. A parson's gan o'er fratchin yet. Is the church gone o'er to Rome? A Yankee's talking loud and tall. Is Ireland satisfied? And the Germans drawn their feet in brass. Has the ballot e'er been tried? Has school boards happy families? Does education thrive? Is charity out but a name? Is selfism still alive? What is it brought thee here today? Has business with thee died? Are out a coming a trimming flowers that em our little bed. I've come to choose a spot on which to raise a stone, I said. Thy native town can give thee that if it couldn't find thee bread. What, what, he said, a monument, a monument to me. Just lift that quarried counterpane and out to set me free. I'll monument em, that I will. A changeful wayward crew, fuss back bite me, then call me spy, and Judas a Peterloo. They raise a monument to me, believe in no such thing. They'd rather have a jumping match, a crown a son chap king. I need no monument, not I, well, not a sculpted stone. Look in me radical, it's there, a tablet of me own. Good deeds are their own monuments, a biggish mon has said. Good lives like tracks at the feet of time. Pass o'er, we kindly tread. Gay bread to poor, to weak give help. My calf stones warm and bright. A lesson teach to the rich and proud, to darken minds give leap. And if, when you and this duty done, you and gather round my grave, and sing him a thankful praise, I'll help you with a stave. Now go and tell em what I've said, but if they're bent on stone, we let em set about it then, and mark their purpose known. And let not year on year go pass, and weights and show get o'er, then find themselves at tender time, just where they were before. If we stood still in those dark days, when patriots pined and bled. How would your minds have now been stored, 
your bodies clothed and fed. Where would your Lancashire have been, of which you are so proud? Your forges and your factories, that now its valleys crowd. But I'm up and a bit cranky, lad, they have made me so with scorn. But bless them all, now let me sleep, till breaks me second morn. Sam laid him down and gan a grunt, said, Mima, love, art here, and I left him to his noble rest, where freshly started tear. Prologue by Samuel Bamford Intended by the author to have been delivered at the Masonic concert in aid of the boys' school, given at the Free Trade Hall, but through some misunderstanding, left out of the programme. Ye sons of charity, and daughters too, we must not leave you out, it would not do, to treat our fair ones to so grave a slight, considering they're here with us tonight. We'll call you sisters, that will make amends, for human thoughtlessness, so let's be friends. Time was when charity was but a name, an empty word that added naught to fame, till woman ventured in that void alone, Struck out a plan, and made the work her own. Sought out the needy, succoured the distressed, And made the desert home one truly blessed. Twin owed his grace to aid in such a plan, And give our sisters all the help we can. They're sure to help their brothers when in need, Their presence here tonight were help indeed. They know tis better than to initiate The gilded virtues of the Roman state. A guarded prudence can be too severe If down the cheek unheeded rolls the tear. To be austerely just and wise and brave, But show no mercy to the suppliant slave, Begging for life that he might fill his days, Training his children into virtue's ways. A voice went forth, I breathed the human race, Let there be light, and darkness fled apace. Then rose the font of life, the glorious sun. At once he starts his heavenly course to run. Ages have passed, and still that cry's the same. Let there be light, a cry without a name. Millions have heard it, scattered o'er the earth. But still t'was chaos, till the voice went forth. Let there be intellectual light. Then filled the cloud, and Shakespeare rose to illumine the world. Thou great diffuser of that heavenly light, Throughout the universe be here tonight, And aid the work attempted in thy name, To airing mortals none a nobler aim. And, O oh, great architect, a temple raise, In which thy worshippers may sound thy praise, And fix forever in the central porch, To radiate o'er the world thy sacred torch. Though shown in symbols, learning is the light, to brighten which we're gathered here tonight. May light and charity the orphans bless, To guide through life, to shelter from distress. So now prepare we for the song and jest, We've done our share. Come, minstrels, do the rest. Red Bill's Monkey by Benjamin Briley Our poop drew up to fire one neat, And charged his pipe with bacca, and Red Bill's monkey grinned in nook, a monkey they called Jacker. Aye, thou may bite thy chain, said Poop, but thou remember mortar, and if thou tries to work again, thou mack it a bit shorter. Work, did you say? I work, said Poop. He's a genius in his way. He's up to out for plastering, to mack in a supper tay. I were daubing up some holes one day, and while I swigged me porter, he picked up trowel and catching cat, he filled a mouth with water. Another time he were watching now, Matt T for a lot of women, and thinking he could mend her work, it thirst on set her swimming. He watched her wear out caddy put on the chimney shelf up fire, but if who known what monkey meant, who surely a put it higher. A backward turn, then up and jack, ere you could say God bless all. Then the box he sees, and lifting lid, he emptied tea in this hole. Then down he come like steeplejack, and jumped on top to cattle. 
and emptied that on our stone too, thinking his job to settle. Jack felt he could improve all what a mon or wench could do by stopping holes that drank his milk and tea by wholesale brew. Oh, poor old Jack, he'll work no more. He were getting too fast for th age, and what but use when all he get were a chain instead of wage. I were living when bony were tame, by Benjamin Briley. There was an old dame used to come down our lane, and a walk, and you'd not find her match. She lived all alone in a one-story cot, and the roof of this dwelling was thatch. She knew not her age any more than the clock, but I were born on Good Friday, they sayin', and somewhere about time at Thembargo were killed, but I were living when bony were tain. No bonnet she'd worn since last rush cart was made, by a napkin tied o'er a cap screen, made her face like two roses just bitten with frost, leaving traces of what they had been. You've seen something, Betty, the neighbours would say. Ay, more than I want to see again. Then she'd shake her old head, dust a pipe on the bar. I were living when bony were tain. A widow some years old Betty had been, but none ever heard her repine. If I wanted to fish for a husband, she'd say, I've no book to throw in my line. You young uns done now, but keep sidling about, and looking as if you're in pain. In my day, to a snap and go bang and get wed, but I were living when bony were tain. On a dark winter night, an old lantern she'd swing, a lantern without horn or glass. If the wind blew the light out, as oft was the case, she'd say, drat your lads, let me pass. If she'd rubbed against a stump in the darkness, she'd say, Now, Jamie, thou art always, it's plain. But I never end me wits with a monkey like thee. I were living when bony were tain. For singing and dancing, old betted no match, though only one song could she sing. It was of one Chinaman, twinkle tum twang, and the chorus was ding a ding ding. This song was she um up from morning till night, then up with the lay rock again. And if her voice failed, ah well, she would say, I were living when bony were tain. Old Betty with living alone was afraid, lest thieves might her front door assail. So when she went shopping, she took out the key, and hung it outside on a nail. But poor old Betty, she could not get warm, that winter the snow filled the lane. Then she said, if our Jack comes again, he may sit. He will live in when bony were tain. The Weaver of Wellbrook by Benjamin Briley Originally published in the Chronicles of Waverlow You gentlemen all with your hands and your parts, you may gamble and sport till you dee. But a quiet house nook, a good wife and a book, are more to the likings of me, eh? With me pickers and pins, and me wellers to shins, me lindering shuttle and yield up, me treadles and sticks, me weight ropes and bricks. What a life, said the waver, a well broke. I care no for titles, nor houses, nor land. How Jones, a name fitting for me. And give me a thatch with a wooden door latch, and six feet of ground when I dee, eh? When me pickers and pins and me wellers to shins, me lindering shuttle and yield out, me treadles and sticks, me weight ropes and bricks, what a life, said a weaver, a well brew. Some folk like unto stuff that out wallets we mate, till they're as rant and as bross and as frogs. But for me I'm content when I've paid down me rent, we enough to keep me up in me clogs, hogs. we me pickers and pins and me wellers to shins, me linder and shuttle and yield out, me treadles and sticks, me weight ropes and bricks, what a life, said the waver, a well brute. And some are too idle to use their own feet, among cower and stoddle in lane, but when I'm wheeled to carried, it'll be to get buried, and then dicky up the old one, John. 
where may pickers and benzer may wellers touch shins, may lindrins shuttle and yield oak, may treadles and sticks, may white ropes and bricks, what a life, said the waver, a well broke. You may turn up your noses at me and thou dame, and thrutch us like dogs against wall. But as long as I can nagger, I'll ne'er be a beggar, so I cannot a cuss for you all, all. We may pickers and pins and may wellers to shins, may lindrins shuttle and yield out, may treadles and sticks, may white ropes and bricks. What a life, said the waver, a well brute. Then Margaret turned round that old um a drum wheel, and me shuttle shall fly like a bread, and when I no longer can use on to a finger, they'll say while I could do I did, Ed. We me pickers and pins and me wellers to shins, me lindering shuttle and yield out, me treadles and sticks, me weight rope and bricks. What a life, said the waver, a well brook. Lancastrians in London by Benjamin Briley Ye sons of gone, time-honoured sire, of Lancashire's proud family, I send you greetings from our home, the home of our great ancestry, our rugged hills and valleys deep, the dearest spot to you and me, the brightest star in England's crown, this gem set in a silver sea. For deeds of valour we're renowned, on field and flood our flag hath waved, On Cressy's walls and Agincourt The storm of battle we have braved. But peace hath her victories as well As those of desolating war, And conquests on the field of toil Than those of arms the nobler far. We've shared those victories, nay, led The van throughout the bloodless strife. Now see our villages and towns, a teeming with industrial life, at wakes or fair on village green, at song or dance, at work or sport, our lanky lads and lasses too are known to be a gradely sort. Let those bear witness to her fame, proud Lancashire, who would not prize a home so fair, why do thy sons to thee still turn with longing eyes? Who could not love a land like this? Is there a man with soul so base, Who's so enwrapped with foreign climes, As not to own his native place? May he who home nor country owns, Who scorns the soil that gave him birth, Or let him wander where he lists, Nor find a resting place on earth? No county in the roll of shires Can match this county palatine, for beauty, sense, and only wit, In which our sons and daughters shine. Then here's to our lang syne, my friends, Though scattered o'er land and sea, We'll pledge in John of Barsley's style, The land we love, our ain country. O oh, may our brotherhood endure, And flourish until time's decay, Then seek at last the better land, the measureless eternity. Two Homes by Benjamin Briley The mistletoe with its berries white, resplendent shone in the dazzling light, as the Lady Abigail sought her bower, away from the glare of that festive hour. Sir Lancelot stole with a lover's tread to her side and whispering softly said, between each often repeated kiss, Oh, what a beautiful world is this! No mistletoe hung in the labourer's cot, No revelries brighten the labourer's lot, And the kisses he took were those from his wife, The share of all the joys of his life. A shawl he brought her of colours gay, It's too fine for me, she was heard to say, But, Jamie, thou'st have an extra kiss, Oh, what a beautiful world is this! Softly the ravishing music came, And filled the soul with a rapturous flame. Sometimes its sound was a trill of joy, That softened down to a maiden's sigh. Sir Lancelot felt that he could not speak, As he pressed the lady Abigail's cheek, But the lady, all come with a measure of bliss, Said, oh, what a beautiful world is this!
Little Billy, he sat on a three-legged stool and played a tune he had learnt at school. It was not a shepherd's pipe he blew, but the tongues were sweet and the air was new. It sounds like an angel's song of praise, though tis but an old crap flute he plays. Tell us, dear Billy, what tune it is. Oh, what a beautiful world is this. My lady Abigail joined the dance, and her rubies flashed like Sir Lancelot's glance. But the music grew faint and lights burnt low, and the janitor's yawn said, It's time to go. The sky was streaked with the hues of morn, when Sir Lancelot's henchman sounded his horn. And was that the end of all earthly bliss? Oh, what a changeable world is this! The baby danced on its mother's knee, and crowed to the music with childish glee. But the father was silent, his heart was full, whilst the reveller's pleasures were waxing dull. This life is what we make it, said he, a sober joy or a drunken spree. Ours is the happier lot, I wish. Oh, what a beautiful world is this.